Christian superior. To take on Matt Rife, I have not watched a single piece of Matt Rife content except for like the one time that he was popping off on like a black woman, I think. And that's it. That's the only thing I saw. And my takeaway from that was my takeaway from that was that he's hot. Like he has like a weird fucked up face, but in like a hot way. Like his his face is like really fucked up and gross, but in a weird way it's like very hot. I don't know how to describe it. But having said that, I do think that I don't, I do think that because he looks too much like handsome Squidward and like ladies loved him or whatever, uh, he, he kind of tried to shed that audience and like get with the boys. And now, and now his, I mean, he never really had like good humor anyway. People were just like kind of laughing because he's hot. Does that make sense? So now that like the people that find him hot don't find him funny or want to listen to what he has to say because he's like shitting on them, he's lost it all. He scared the hoes. He fucking sucks. Yeah, except except the thing is like my my hot take is that like I don't think you should cancel a comedian for for being like misogynistic because I you know I'm going to fucking I'm a man. Obviously, I have toxic masculine uh, aspects to my existence and sometimes I say shit that's like misogynistic. I think you should cancel a comedian for not being funny. And I think his misogyny comes from being a hack. More so like it's a it's a desperate attempt to try and make a joke and then failing to be funny which is the worst thing you can do as a comedian. And anyone, and let me tell you something. No matter how neurodivergent some of you motherfuckers might be in here, there's still the concept of your problematic fave. Why do you have a problematic fave? Because their output is consistent and good regardless of the fucking politics that you don't agree with. So don't come for me and be like, Hassan, oh my God, ah, this guy's being misogynistic. No, you hate him because he's not funny. That's it. He's not funny, and he's being misogynistic in an unfunny way. If he was actually funny, we would be having a different conversation. Dave Chappelle is another example of this, okay? That's it. If you're going to be problematic, if you're going to make, like, jokes about issues, you're going to make jokes about issues that are, like, maybe on the, on the edge there, you, you have to be funny. You just have to. He's the opposite of Shane Gillis. Yeah, I mean, even Shane Gillis' is like stand-up special was all right. Like, there were really good ones. I feel like a lot of stand-up specials, like, because Netflix is just seemingly giving everybody money, um, there's a lot of stand-up specials out there that I would not consider to be, like, wall-to-wall uh, laughter-inducing. And, like, Shane Gillis has some really good jokes and then some really mid ones where it's, like, just... Straight fucking toilet humor, really hitting the fucking, you know, men versus women in a relationship type shit. And it's very interesting because, like, I mean, I don't know. Comedy is very subjective. So it's hard to just look at that and and agree with me. Uh, maybe you're going to say, oh, you're in the wrong here. I thought Shane was, like, really funny. Because he has incredibly funny bits. Like, he has incredibly funny he has really solid jokes and then sometimes he has like really like mid-tier jokes Matt Reif on the other hand doesn't touch the most mid Shane Gillis joke he is just as far as I've seen not very funny at all Matt Reif's crowd work is genuinely quick and witty but his normal act is very typical cancel culture stuff I mean his crowd work is witty and quick because that's what pops off on TikTok. But you can't make an actual stand-up special with that. He says 
something like that. He's body shaming me. Cancel Matt Rife. Bitch, you can't cancel me. I'm not your gym membership. Get the fuck off my feet there. You can talk your shit to me online as much as you want. Say whatever mean, hurtful things you want to say to try to hurt my feelings. But just know, I'm going to fuck you up verbally. <laughs> I'm, my goal is to now make you cry. Like, I'm going to win this battle every time. So when I hit you harder than you hit me first, don't act like you're the fucking victim, okay? That's my biggest pet peeve on the entire internet. And... Probably, probably, dude, what the fuck? He's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. Oh, God. It's not liberalism that kills comedy, okay? It's a, it's a desperate attempt at trying to get this, okay? If this is what you're doing, if this is what you're looking for, you're not a fucking comic, dude. Like, I would never say I'm a comedian, okay? Because I'm not. I'm not. I think you have to be uh, witty. You have to be clever. You have to be funny. I'm none of those things, okay? I get a lot of this, though. I get a lot of this, and I get a lot of booze, obviously. But I'm not a fucking comedian. Like, I don't have a stand-up special. This guy, on the other hand, is, like, claiming to be a, uh, a, a comedian, and he's, he's doing a TED Talk. Don't do it. Don't do it then. Don't do it. Do a TED Talk instead. Do a, do a podcast and, and uh, uh, complain about cancel culture on the podcast. I hate that. Compare him to Nick Mullen. Like, Nick Mullen is a great example of an old school comedian person who will, uh, st who, who has like really fucking good jokes, really good jokes. And then because, and this is the same goes for Shane Gillis too, like, and then some of the stuff that he attempts uh, to, to uh, create laughter out of or just, it, it doesn't hit. And if it doesn't hit, then it comes across very bigoted and awful, okay? But because he is, because he has a lot of really fucking solid jokes, really solid jokes, that ultimately, like, yeah, he is a good comedian. Not every, not every one of your fucking not every one of your jokes is going to hit. A lot of people don't understand that. Shout outs for giving Nick kudos for once. Wait, what? I don't know if you know this, but it's an ongoing bit. Like, what do you mean? Um, the thing is, I literally use Nick's fucking cop joke all the time on stream. Like, I pull it up myself personally. About who you're gonna call when you're, uh, oh yeah, you hate cops. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna butcher it, but the the classic. I honestly didn't know Matt was conservative. So you don't like Matt Rife? I don't know enough about Matt Rife. I just heard his comedy special is mid, and this seems very mid. Probably the best example of that was throughout this Twitter interaction when all this backpack shit was going on. I'm, you know, I'm arguing with people. We're going roast for roast. Just really having some fun, wasting time. I was having fun with it. And then there was this one woman who took it too far. She would not shut the fuck up, dude. <sighs> His crowd work is funny. That's it, though. Because there was failed to recognize that Tommy's the most important element of comedy. Yes. What do you mean, dog? You're a Twitch streamer. You're always selling yourself short. You're witty and funny. Just this top of the hour ad break is a quick and witty three minute early. Fucking Christ. Um. Man, you gotta say if you start a joke with arguing with someone on Twitter, it's already gonna be bad. Yeah. I I don't know. I I just like. Cancel culture is so fucking insanely played out. It's so, it's so overdone. Come on. It was hacky in like 2018, brother. How are you still running that shit? How are you still running that shit?
is. I've only been to Baltimore one time. I ate lunch there, and the hostess who like seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> full black it wasn't like what happened yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened and we couldn't get over the fact that we we're like this is the face of the company like this is this is what you have greeting people and my boy who i was with was like yeah i feel bad for her man i feel like they should put her in the kitchen or something where nobody where nobody has to see her face you know and i was like yeah but i feel like if she could cook she wouldn't have that black eye Testing the water, seeing if y'all are gonna be fun or not. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, it's it's such a fucking old bit, dude. Don't do the oh wow is funny. It's not because it's not because it's like ooh edgy. Like I don't I don't care. This doesn't this is not shocking. It's just a hack bit. It's like nineteen fifties comedy. You know what I mean? Ah, my bitch ex wife. Ah, <laughs> my bitch wife. <laughs> you see, she can't cook a meal. That's why she has a black eye. Is uh, uh, see, this is what I mean. I'm not. I'm not analyzing this from this perspective of like, let's joke about abuse. That's so funny. You could do that. You could. Okay, a good comedian, a good comedian can make a joke about domestic violence or anything for that matter. It just depends on what angle you're taking. Okay, what angle you're taking. The angle on that can't be. Lol, domestic abuse, because then it's not that funny. Does that make sense? Like, especially if you're going to do lol, domestic abuse, or, like, especially if you're going to go for edgy comedy, if you're going to do the Daniel Tosh, uh, or or uh, the, the fucking, what's his face? What's the other one who's also handsome uh, and, and does... Uh... Jezelnik, Anthony Jezelnik, like they go way above and beyond because domestic violence is like too commonplace to just like point the finger at and go lol. If you want to, if you want to open up, if you want to open up, you, you, you have to really open up. I think. I just to see. I just to see. <laughs> figure we start the show with domestic violence. The rest of the show should be. Pretty smooth sailing after that. He's implying she'd be fired for being abused by an intimate partner, which he presumed in the first place for no reason. Where's the punchline? Did he take it too literally? Oh my god, I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done.